What's up, nerds? Russia's offensive for 2024 in Ukraine has begun. Thus far, they've been able to make some progress in a few key areas, and we're going to talk about what has happened so far in the past couple weeks since we last spoke. We're also going to talk about where this offensive is likely heading here in the future, and we're going to complete this video discussing how Ukraine can defend itself from this offensive into later 2024. So first, I want to offer a quick caveat. Of course, I'm recording this video on the 2nd of May, 2024, but this appears to be a rolling start to this offensive, meaning that this is similar to past Russian offensives that we've seen in this conflict, where basically the routine tempo that they've kept throughout this war of kind of small scale squad platoon level attacks throughout the front line, that continues with those you know, kind of begin to get scaled up. So from, you know, squad and platoon to platoon company size attacks, you know, not necessarily across a broad front, but really targeting specific areas. And those kind of get scaled up to a larger and larger scale as this offensive kind of spools up. And ultimately this offensive will culminate at, on pretty large scale attacks, either once, you know, the objective has been gained or the forces themselves have been exhausted. As an example, last year in 2023, the Russian offensive culminated with the taking of Bakhmut and really with the exhaustion of Russian forces that were taking Bakhmut and that were also attacking in a couple of other areas. And that exhaustion uh, allowed Ukraine to uh, launch their counteroffensive. We're going to talk about kind of why that's not going to really be the same kind of uh, application here in 2024, but let's go ahead and get started talking about what has happened so far. So Russia is attacking in a few key areas. Firstly, they're attacking south in Zaporizhia, they're attacking northwest of Divka, and they're attacking in the north near Chasov Yar. Now, south in Zaporizhia, Russia has been able to retake the city of Robotny, and this was a town that was taken by Ukraine during the 2023 counteroffensive, and this is really inside of this little pocket. Uh, we're looking here at deep state map. You can see the green area. That's where Ukraine was able to take from Russia during the counteroffensive, and Russia is trying to close that pocket and even out its lines back to where it was prior to that counteroffensive. Now, looking northwest of Avdivka, a pretty concerning situation has taken place. Russia has managed to exploit a gap in the Ukrainian lines and it appears that this happened because of either a miscommunication or a failure on the part of one of the Ukrainian units. The exact circumstances of why that unit left don't seem to be very clear at this point. However, in either case, that left a gap in the line that Russia was able to exploit to, and they were able to push all the way to Ocherotiny. Now, I'm going to try to pronounce these you know, town names as best as I can, so please bear with me. Um, but they have been able to actually expand the pocket that they've taken in and around this town, pushing northwest towards Novoleksandrivka and south towards no Novopokorovsk. So this is a pretty dangerous situation for Ukraine. Of course, they've got a grouping of forces to the south of this town, and there's a larger grouping of forces to the north that we're going to talk about. Now to the south, there are several lakes and a river that can create a concerning barrier for these Ukrainian forces to retreat through. Of course, it's, you know, you're not going to treat through a lake, but rivers can be a real barrier, especially for heavy equipment if you don't have bridging equipment or already established bridges. The Russian advance to the south along the M30 highway can close the southern escape route. So that really forces Ukraine to either escape through bridges along the river or to move north or northwest through Evgenivka. Now, the Russian advance through Ocherotiny threatens that route, that northern route as well. So we may see a Ukrainian retreat in this area to avoid encirclement if the Russians are continuing to push in this area and that continues to threaten this grouping of forces from not only being resupplied but also for having a method of withdrawal if needed. This might be a fighting retreat to slow the Russian advance and allow you know and buy some time for the defensive lines that are being built further back to be completed. Now that takes us towards Chasov Yar where and we, we've already discussed that whole situation already in depth in another video so I'm going to link you to that video at the end of this one for a more in-depth look at specifically the Battle of Chasov Yar that is coming up. Now the advance to the northwest of Ocherotiny uh, along the highway from Chasov Yar are also very interesting to look at. The southern axis may be attempting to reach the highway and cut that supply line to Konstantinivka from the south as well as to the southern grouping of forces 
around New York and Sherbanivka. This, of course, complicates Ukrainian logistics in the area. It, there is another highway north from Kramatorsk that can supply these forces. However, that is closer to the front line and it kind of runs parallel to the front line. So that opens a lot of opportunities for the Russian military and the Russian Air Force to hit those, not only with glide bombs, but with cruise missiles. And that's, of course, not something that you want. That also limits the avenues for supply. So, that, so of course, you want to diversify the ways that you can get supplies to your forces and forcing the Ukrainians to only use, you know, one main highway to supply this pretty broad front, that can be a pretty significant issue. Now, ultimately, Russia may be attempting to either force Ukraine to retreat from this pocket and really push back to where they are able to resupply themselves better to or else they will risk encirclement. This is a potentially dangerous situation for Ukraine, but again, we're not necessarily, you know, that close to this being a significant issue. Russia has a lot of fighting to do to reach not only the highway, but they're going to have to hold the highway. And they're also going to have to push through Chasov Yar to really kind of threaten this whole grouping of forces. And they're going to have and the main thing is holding this area because, you know, they can reach the highway. But if Ukraine's able to push them back off the highway and keep that highway secure, then it really doesn't matter. At least it, it's not as, as significant as it, of an issue as if, you know, Russia is able to hold the highway and prevent Ukrainian resupply along that route and force, you know, them to take the kind of the long way around. Now, there is another risk of a second Russian offensive around the city of Kharkiv. Now, we've discussed already in other videos about the Fab, the fab Glide bomb about how Russia is launching these glide bombs not only on military and defensive structures around Kharkiv but also on civilian areas around Kharkiv. This is the second largest city in Ukraine and it's very close to the Russian border. Russia attempted to take this city in the beginning of the war but they failed. They you know a lot of that was due to poor planning and poor logistics. However according to one report by Financial Times Russia may be massing as many as 20 to 40 thousand troops along the border in Belgorod uh, preparing for an Offensive on Kharkiv. Now, the overall Russian offensive may take place as early as May 9th, but some believe that it could be around mid to late May. May 9th, of course, is a very historically important day for Russia that marks the end of World War II, and every year they have large military parades in Moscow to celebrate the occasion. Now, once this offensive actually starts officially, we'll probably continue to see medium to large scale attacks in the south towards Ochertinia, and I'm continuing to butcher that name, as well as towards Chasov Yar. Uh, and perhaps in an attempt to kind of close that pocket that we've talked about already. But there is a chance that we might see an attack on Kharkiv. And I think that this is kind of an interesting thing to take a look at. Now that they've fought this war for a couple years and they kind of understand the pace on how this war is going, they may attempt to lay siege to the city and really go in with a better sustained and better planned out longer term assault on the city of Kharkiv instead of trying to blitz through it and try, you know, try to get to it quickly like they did last time which did not work. It may also be possible that the massing of forces in Belgorod is really an attempt to pin Ukrainian forces along the border in Kharkiv and prevent them from being down where the fight is. So really it, it's you know drawing Ukrainian forces to the north and, and Ukraine's in a much tougher situation manpower wise than Russia is. So that's a pretty significant deal for Ukraine even if that's the case, even if there is no fighting in Kharkiv, just the fact that Ukraine has to account for the Russian threat towards Kharkiv on the ground, you know, that, that can have an impact where the fighting is as well. Now, Ukraine is in a very challenging situation right now as it stands and as, you know, Russia is building up for this offensive. The passing of the U.S. aid bill finally does give Ukraine the ammo and the equipment that they desperately need. Granted, it's a little bit late, uh, but it's it's happening now this doesn't actually fix all of their problems they still have a pretty significant manpower problem as well they did pass a draft bill in April and that's going to take a little bit of time that's going to take some months for troops to be recruited into the army trained properly and to be equipped and to be sent to the units that they need to be sent to of course that is a lot of time and that's starting in April so you we could be looking at a July August time frame for the first troops to actually be reaching the front line from that draft bill the Equipment from the U.S. might take weeks to arrive, so it could be mid to late May or even early June that a lot of that equipment starts to arrive. 
even though some of the equipment has already started to reach Ukraine. So, but you know, we're talking about in bulk artillery ammunition arriving, and that's really what's going to make a, a pretty significant difference once it starts arriving. Of course, that's not going to give Ukraine parity with Russia in artillery volume, but it will give Ukraine the ability to better defend the positions that they have right now. Now, with all that being said, Ukraine is certainly in the most difficult position that they'll be in right now. And if they can hold on for now, then they'll probably be in a much better position in the latter half of 2024. Now, Russia probably sees this and they may be attempting to ex to seize that opportunity and exploit that right now with a rolling start to their offensive. You know, we've already talked about the attack in Robotnia. We've already talked about the attacks around Avdivka. And we've talked about the looming attack on Chasov Yar. Russia is more than likely attempting to exploit this little time horizon, this opportunity that, that they have right now that Ukraine is still still waiting on ammunition and still waiting on new recruits to arrive that there, there's already we know that in a few months at least those situations probably won't be as dire for Ukraine as they are today and so Russia you know is trying to exploit that vulnerability right now as best as they can now in the meantime it should be noted that this offensive isn't as simple as just oh, okay they're just going to attack these places and take it you know, Ukraine can still inflict massive casualties on Russia. Ukraine is reported to have generated well over 450,000 casualties so far in this war. And that includes both killed, wounded, and captured. And this figure, of course, it comes from Ukraine. It's likely inflated well past its actual number. However, it should be noted that the UK military intelligence has kind of echoed this number. In either case, it certainly demonstrates how costly these offensives have been for Russia and, and that they continue to be for Russia. And this next offensive likely won't be any different. It will likely continue to cost Russia a massive amount of lives and equipment, even with the Ukrainian vulnerabilities that we've already discussed. And while they're likely to suffer a tremendous amount of casualties in this looming offensive, they're probably going to be more effective in actually gaining and taking ground than they were in past offensives. And that's partly due to the Ukrainian vulnerabilities that we've discussed, but that's also due to terrain. I mean, they're not necessarily fighting over the same urban areas that they were fighting for over the last offensive. Mind you, last the last offensive culminated with the taking of Bakhmut and a lot of that offensive actually took place in and around Bakhmut. Russia has also had to spend a lot of time fighting in and around Avdivka, which cost them a tremendous amount of manpower and equipment. It, right now where they're fighting, it's really just smaller towns and villages and then a lot of open terrain. So it'll be easier for them to kind of push forward and take some territory than it had been before. However, they, they once they start reaching area you know more urban areas like Konstantinivka or Chasov Yar or even New York you know these can be some pretty significant challenges for Russia and that's really where Ukraine can start to dig in and inflict way more casualties than in you know say open areas basically Ukraine's goal is to create you know an Avdivka 2.0 or Bakhmut 2.0 where they're dug in they're defending and they're you know defending against open, you know, broad Russian attacks and they're inflicting massive, massive amounts of casualties. And those opportunities exist in some of those towns. So let, I want to hear what you think. You know, let me know what you think on where this offensive is headed. Like this video if you found it helpful or informative and subscribe for more analysis on this conflict. With all that, I'll see you all next time. Later.